So, Arkham Knight's out. After the original two games were both received so positively, and a third weird unimportant game was buggy and lame, the hype was on. Does this new game live up to its predecessors? Well, I had to say I was a bit disappointed with it. The game's not bad, I really did like it, it's just majorly, majorly flawed. There's too many nitpicks for me to say the game's great, too much cool stuff for me to call it bad, and it's way too interesting for me to call it mediocre. So here I am staring at it while both simultaneously enjoying it and griping about it while trying to articulate my speechlessness. <sighs> at least with bad games you know how you feel about them. Now everything's all mixed together and it's kind of driving me crazy. The gameplay is radical for the most part, and I have another video out on the challenge mode if that's what you want to watch, but this video is going to focus more on the game's less than stellar story mode. First off, this story stars Scarecrow, which really means that the game's much more about Batman's insecurity in the Bat Family than in the criminals. Obviously, from the first trailer, you can tell that Arkham Knight's Jason Todd, better known as the Red Hood, and if you couldn't piece that together, then the game isn't very subtle about it anyways. Without Joker, the game's very purposely having less fun than usual. The stakes are a lot higher, too. Literally everyone gets kidnapped, killed, or held hostage at some point in the story. They got Oracle, Robin, Other Robin, Catwoman, Lucius, Nightwing, and they even steal Batman. Oh no, Poison Ivy's dead, Barb's dead, Jason's dead, the Batmobile, Tiny the Shark, they're dead, and they're never, ever coming back. The stakes are supposed to be raised in this game, and these casualties are supposed to reflect how Batman failed to save Jason. But it doesn't really work. Every side mission somehow reflects Jason's death and Batman's fear of failing his friends, but it just comes across as every other character being super incompetent. Nightwing tracks down some cars, but he gets held hostage twice in the span of five minutes. Tim helps Batman with the Jokers, but he failed to stop the Joker's blood from getting on the street, and then he couldn't find a cure, not to mention getting stomped on by both Harley and Scarecrow. But then, there's Jason. After he breaks himself the Batman, he gets himself kidnapped, tries to spill his secrets, gets himself killed, and then he comes back and tries to kill Batman for his mistakes. We never really get to see any of these characters shine in the story, and since their involvement was pretty minor in the previous games, this is all we get from them. They never do anything useful, and they just keep needing help. They're practically just a bunch of slippy toads. You can't up the ante when death is treated like it is in this fiction. I was relieved to see Joker cremated in the beginning of the game. Even if he's a fun character, we get no clones, no Lazarus Pit, no loose ends. Of course, though, he comes back as a manifestation of Batman's fear. It's fine, I like his interpretation here, but so many people just come back. What? Oracle's dead? No, shut up, she's fine though. We saw Jason take a bullet to the head, but they don't even bother trying to justify his return. Even the Batmobile comes back with the only cost being a coat of paint. If you fool the viewer enough times into thinking something of lost, they'll just stop trusting him. Though I suppose it'd be hypocritical for me to say that when I really like Jason Todd. Well, to be more specific, I like the character from Under the Red Hood. This interpretation doesn't make any sense. In Arkham Knight, Jason wants to kill Batman for letting Joker kidnap him in an incident that the player never actually gets to see. In the comics, and in the animated adaptation, Red Hood was much more interesting. Bruce, I forgive you for not saving me. But why? Why on God's earth? Is he still alive? That's a much deeper character with solid motivation and a good point. But Arkham Knight can't feel that way, because Joker is dead in this canon, and Batman's even a little bit, almost, kinda sorta responsible for it if you don't think about it too hard. So now all he can do is complain and set himself up for failure, which coincidentally is the reason his character was killed off by fans originally. He's not the only annoying character though. Everyone seems to be extra salty at Batman in this game. Scarecrow does pretty much the same common collected, be scared of me voice throughout the entire game, only getting upset once or twice. Deathstroke, who never seems to shut up, never sounds like a real fighter because he's too busy being butthurt about how he got bodied in Origins and now he's just waiting for Batman to beat all his goons so that they can get to their boss fight. And all the other villains are pretty much just one note. Arkham Origins and Arkham Knight feel like a bunch of half-baked equivalents to Batman stories that already exist, which is weird because the first two games were their own thing. Paul Dini didn't come back for the last two, so I think that's what happened, but I don't know why they wouldn't bring him back and then just go and do his old stuff. 
He didn't write Under the Red Hood, but Arkham Origins had a weird segment about killing Joke along with Deanie's Mad Love. But it never really went anywhere. Just a couple of Origins for Origins' sake. Just like the Mr. Freeze DLC, which is just Cold Cold Heart. The problem is that these stories don't work the same in a video game, especially when they're rushed and crammed into a different story about something else. There's a Paul Dini story called Over the Edge, where Scarecrow causes Batgirl to dream that her death causes a conflict between Gordon and Batman, which leads to the public reveal of Bruce Wayne's secret and Batman's death. Arkham Knight borrows heavily from the plot and imagery of this story, but since the perspective has changed from Batgirl to Batman, the meaning is completely changed. I don't understand why the game's doing this. These stories already exist, and they can't just be thrown together into one super story. It doesn't really work like that. I don't know who this game's being marketed to. Fans of Batman already know these stories, so they wouldn't be interested in a lesser version of the original, and people who haven't seen these stories don't get the reference and lose the takeaway since it's all changed. At one point in the development of Arkham City, Oracle's gonna be kidnapped by Hugo Strange and Batman was gonna have to save her. It's a good concept and I'm glad it got actually used in Arkham Knight, but if you think about it, Arkham Knight's more old stuff than new. In City, Batman has to fight an enemy who knows him better than he knows himself, while being poisoned by Joker's blood. In Night, it's the same thing, but less interesting because we lose the fun characters. I'm not 100% if this is intentional or not, but maybe it's purposely told like that so we get to experience the Scarecrow sequences from the first game, but now Batman is forced to confront his fears. This story has a Gordon killed, Bruce's failures return from the grave, and Batman being brought into the asylum mirroring the first game's intro. This could have been an excellent callback, if only they stuck the landing. The problem is that instead of focusing on Batman overcoming his fears, the camera just cuts to Joker succumbing to his. The cool idea probably goes over most players' heads, because the execution is just so off. Props for some good ideas, but I think they just missed what was important. The reason that I was surprised by this subtlety is because most of the game really struggles with being absurdly on the nose. Let's see if you eagle-eyed viewers can pinpoint the super subtle subtlety expertly woven into the script. I don't understand how a script can be so spotty between both the subtext and the dialogue. At one moment, everything's fine, but then suddenly, 50-year-old assassin Deathstroke is going on about how it sucks to be player two. As horrendous as these bits are, I'd hate to sound like an epicky fanboy, so let's instead move on and complain about the ending. One of the big things they wanted to see this game do was to bring the Arkham games to a close. I'm really sick of stories that just go on and on until people stop buying them, so I like a good ending when I can get one. That said, I still do have a few gripes here. Yeah, big surprise. Robin and Oracle's marriage is fine, I guess, but since we never see these characters together literally ever, it's kind of out of left field. Though the bigger problem here is that it might imply that Batman doesn't have sidekicks anymore, which sends a really dark message. Friends and family only get in the way and die. You don't need them, just be a loner all the time. Some things you can't do alone, Bruce. And some things you have to. I understand that Batman's pushing people away because he's afraid that they'll get hurt, but this seems very backwards from what I think the game was going for. Isn't he supposed to be conquering his fears here? He gassed you, Bruce. You don't need to worry about us or feel responsible. We're fighting with you, not for you, okay? I also can't help but feel like all this could have been avoided, you know? Both the good guys and the baddies are constantly setting themselves up for failure. Every single time Batman doesn't just snap Scarecrow's jaw off, and every single time Ark of Night brags about how he's not ready to kill you yet, the stakes disappear because the player knows exactly how the scene is going to end. I know the game wouldn't work if I could just completely win right away, but maybe this story shouldn't be told that way. If Red Hood was on the roof with a sniper rifle, then why didn't he just shoot Scarecrow in the head before the unmasking? Er, like, even... We already got a perfect body double for Bruce Wayne, why don't we hand him over to the cops and get Batman's credibility back? This is the premise, not an ending. Where's the rest of the story? Am I being unfair? I really like the game, and I'd love to put it up there with the other two classics, but I guess it just couldn't live up to its legacy. 
I know I've been ripping on it really hard, but I don't hate it. I genuinely like the gameplay and I enjoyed my time with it, but I guess it just isn't as good as it could have been. It's not a bad game, it's just extremely mixed, and in the end, that's the most frustrating thing it ever could have been.